My name's Dwayne. I'm with Local Vape Shop and Local Vape Distro. You guys can find me on Instagram at OC. And today we're going to be doing one of my favorite builds. It's going to be a Fuse Clapton. Uh, we're going to be using a lower gauge wire. We're going to be uh, doing this with 26 gauge Anarchist wire. And for the outer core, we're going to be using some 36 gauge Nichrome 80. Um, I found with this build, using the Nichrome wire, that the flavor on it is just phenomenal. I've tried running parallel wires and the flavor kind of gets muted and it gets a little hot. And so with this build, what we're doing is we're taking two core wires and we're transferring heat to the outer wire that we're going to wrap it with. And that cooler vapor comes off and it just, it, it gives it a lot better flavor than you would do with just a normal basic five wrap, six wrap of 26 gauge. Uh, or even parallel wires. I found that when I do parallels, they're, they're really warm uh, vapes. Now the resistance on this build is still going to be low. It's going to be it's going to be just basically like doing a set of parallel wires. The outer portion of it really does not change uh, the resistance factor in this build. Um, I've experimented with a lot of builds and by far hands down this one is at the top. I'd say it's the top three builds that, that are creative builds that you could do. And I found for the amount of time and energy that goes into this build, it's, it's the most efficient build out there. Uh, we got some other builds like the Staple Helix. Um, you know, it takes an hour and a half, two hours to do the build. So for a build like this, knock it out start to finish in 15 minutes. It doesn't require like an expert skill level to get it done and it's pretty relatively simple. It doesn't require you to go out and buy a ton of special tools. Most, most of the vapors out there have this in their toolkit. So it's pretty easy, pretty simple build, and uh, I'm gonna walk you guys through that right now. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take some 26 gauge wire, and we're gonna install that into the drill. We're gonna take about 18 inches, just like so. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then with a set of needle nose, hold tension on it. We're just going to turn on the drill. Doesn't matter clockwise, counterclockwise. Then I'll just run my finger down here to prevent it from recoiling and release. And then now what we're going to do is just fold it in half like that. Now I'm going to bend the end over to make a little tab, then just reinstall that into the drill. And make sure this is nice and tight. Now I'll take out a small screwdriver here and then just pull on the wires to make them parallel and even and tight. Just like that. Then we're going to take off about I'd say about eight feet of 36 gauge. Just install that into the drill, just like that. And then what I like to do is you got two options. You can either go clockwise or counterclockwise. For me, I like to go in the clockwise rotation. And that's just because when I hold the wire from underneath, it allows me to pinch the wires from underneath with my nail and my uh, finger. So I'll grasp the wire in my hand just like this. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna hold tension against this wire. And then I'll take my thumb and my index right here and I'll put it my thumbnail at a slight angle, just like that. And now I'm gonna create tension here in between my finger and my thumb. And just start the clapping portion. I'm not actually moving my arm, my hand, none of that. I'm actually, as it wraps the wire, it's moving my hand for me because I have that tension in between my thumb and my pointer finger. So it acts as a guide. We 
we can take out some of the twists in the wire while this thing's still on the drill. So there's a few twists right here in the first couple inches. So what I'll do is just with my uh, nylon tip pliers, I'll hold it right there past the twist and then just slowly in reverse remove those twists. Just like that. And it doesn't have to be like picture perfect. It can have a small rotation in it. Because you have two core wires, when you wrap it around that screwdriver, uh, the two core wires are going to want to stay flat and parallel to each other. So a small rotation in it, not a big deal. It's easy to come out. So just remove that from the drill. And we're going to take that and we're going to cut it right in the middle. There. Cut off the excess. Cut off those little guys so they don't poke you in the finger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for six wraps around about a 2.4 millimeter screwdriver and that allows the wicking for it to keep up. It wicks. If you go any smaller then you're going to probably get some dry hits. It doesn't really wick that quick. One, two, I like to keep my leads coming down at a 90 degree angle like that and I'll show you in the next step why because we're going to use a two post RDA so we need to offset one of the leads here and we're just going to do that again for the second coil. If I go straight into the post with this lead here that means this lead's going to need to come over uh, to right about there so what I'll do is I'll take my needle nose here and then just bend that lead over just like so when I'm bending it I'm not only twisting it but I'm kind of pushing inwards towards the coil to keep it from creating actually this this coil is nice and tight so from keeping this coil from spacing out a little bit on me so now that I got that kind of bent over I just want to right where I marked that spot right where I eyeballed it I'm going to fold that lead coming back in, that way the two are parallel. And I'll just check it to make sure it fits in this thing here, which it does perfectly. And that's exactly where I want it. And what I like to do is slide it in there, then I'll just cut off the excess right now. And then I'll remove it. I'll do the same thing with this here. I'm going to offset the leads. Fold it over. Bring it in. Install it. Just hold the coil right here with your finger. And snip off the excess. Now that I got that one in, just take that second coil and install that in there. And take my itty bitty screwdriver here and I'm going to tighten down the terminals. So now I'm going to manipulate the coils just to get them a little more centered here, just like so. So I'm going to pull out and push over, rotate it out and over. 
And that's just so the wicking properties are even, so that way the wick has enough room to fold over and come under. Just check these screws one more time after you move them. Make sure they're making good contact. There you go. For safety reasons, I like to put this on a ohm meter. It's just a good habit to get into. You want to check your ohms and just make sure that there's no internal shorts with the RDA. So that came out to a 0.12 right on the dot. And we're going to want to pulse it at about 50 watts. You don't want to go in at 100 watts and pulse this. You're going to wind up hot spotting the coil out. So the lower the wattage is, that's the best way to set these coils. And I'll just do a couple quick pulses. All I'm doing is just introducing electricity to the coils, allowing the coils to oxidize a little bit. And then with my ceramic tweezers, I can come in and start to pulse the coils. And start to work out all the little hot spots in it. This is a technique called strumming. It works really well, especially with nichrome wire. Um, if you're still getting minor hot spot issues, what I like to do is pulse it, release it, and then just strum it a few times. Pulse it, release it, strum it. Do the same thing for this side here. You can see there's a little hot spot right there, so I'll pulse it, strum it, pulse it, strum it, and you can just see that hot spot disappearing. So now you can turn up the wattage. Now that you got it, the hot spots worked out of it, you can turn it up to 80 watts here. You just want to make sure both coils are glowing pretty even. Otherwise, if you don't, one coil is going to burn off the juice quicker than the other coil and that makes for some pretty interesting hits later.